What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, I'm gonna tell you why not to ever say that your breath sounds are coarse, because they're not. Let's dive in. All right, so I have to be honest with you here. This video is rooted in a ginormous pet peeve of mine. Uh, when we're working with, with, with students and with other respiratory therapists, you're always talking about breath sounds. What's the patient's breath sounds? What's the patient's breath sounds? What are they? And you should be learning how to listen to patients and decipher what different breath sounds sound like. Now, the challenging part of this is that breath sounds are subjective to the person listening, also at the time for which they're listening. So breath sounds can change in a matter of seconds. So something that you hear at one second may not be heard five minutes later. That's not my point here today. My point is, is that we need to break down and come to an understanding of what the acceptable breath sounds are. There's only a few of them, and we somehow complicate it. So today's video is all about auscultation. So let's throw that up here. Auscultation, this is the art of using your stethoscope to listen to breath sounds. Now, I'm gonna break this down into two categories. We're going to have normal, and we're gonna have adventitious. Now, the funny thing about the term adventitious, this is bad. And I just had a student the other day tell him, I was like, well, this is kind of a tricky word because adventitious sounds very similar to advantageous. So when you see this word, sometimes you might think, oh, this is a good breath sound. It's not. Adventitious is bad. Normal is good. So what type of breath sounds are there? We're going to start with the normal because I think that's typically understood to be very, very easy. Okay. The first normal sound we may hear when listening to a patient is a tracheal breath sound. Now, when you are listening to your patients, if you ever listen over the trachea, mid sternum over the trachea you will hear air movement it will be very loud it will be intense you will hear all of inspiration and all of expiration this is important because it's going to come back in a little bit over the trachea where you hear tracheal breath sounds all of inspiration and all of expiration are heard now the next one here is bronco vesicular if you listen over the upper part of the sternum and posterior between the scapulas, you will hear air movement moving through the middle airways. So after the trachea bifurcates at the carina into the right and left main stem, you will hear that air movement as well. This is also going to be loud and fairly intense, not as intense as tracheal, but you're still going to hear all of inspiration and all of expiration. Not until we get to vesicular are we really assessing breath sounds out over the alveoli and the periphery of the lung. Now the term vesicular essentially means clear breath sounds. If you chart clear, then what you're telling me is you heard vesicular breath sounds. Now these breath sounds are going to be soft and muffled. You're going to hear all of inspiration, but you're really only going to hear about the first third of expiration. Now, this is important because remember, these breath sounds are going to be soft and muffled. They're not going to be a loud, intense breath sound. This is important because I feel like a lot of times we hear vesicular breath sounds, but we end up charting them as diminished. Maybe that's not true. But ask yourself, when you're listening to breath sounds, soft, clear, nothing out of normal in hearing, you're just hearing air movement, all of inspiration, the first third of expiration. If you hear that, you've heard normal breath sounds. These are vesicular and clear. Now, the problem that I experience on damn near a daily basis is when we start defining adventitious breath sounds. This is where things get complicated. Let me list for you 
the adventitious breath sounds. We have a wheeze. We have a crackle. We have bronchial. We have strider. And then we have, of course, the pleural friction rub that you might occasionally hear. Now, the way we break these down are very simple. A wheeze is any continuous sound. And what do I mean by continuous? It means that when you're listening to your breath sounds and you hear something that sounds like this, e that's a continuous sound. Okay, you can applaud my sound effects. When you talk about a crackle, we are talking about a discontinuous sound. Well, what does a discontinuous sound mean? Well, a discontinuous sound would be something like this. You see how there's breaks in the sounds? It sounds more like a rattle which is why crackles are oftentimes referred to, not as common as what they used to be, but the term rail or rails is the French word for rattle. So if you ever hear discontinuous sounds, then we're talking about a crackle. Continuous, talking about a wheeze. It's literally that simple. Now, what we find is that we can further define these breath sounds. What do I mean by that? Well, when we look at crackles here, we understand that we can have coarse or we can have fine crackles. Now, coarse crackles are what were previously referred to as ronchi. This is where you hear air moving through the large and upper airways and you can actually hear this kind of rumbling and tumbling sound of secretions that oftentimes clear with a cough or with the aid of suctioning. These are coarse crackles and that's what they should be called. Now, there is this idea that, okay, well, I thought those were ronchi. Well, let me pull out my handy dandy Egan's here. And I'm just going to read to you what Egan states. And I'm not making this up. This is out of Egan's. Okay? So it talks about discontinuous adventitious lung sounds referred to as either crackles or rails. Rails from the French word rattle. Uh, and then, however, RTs will often encounter the term ronchi. Here's the important part. It is no longer a favored word to describe breath sounds, however, still widely used by older clinicians. So congratulations, if you say ronchi, you are now considered older. My point is this, we have to understand how to use these terms when we are defining breath sounds so we can improve the continuity of care. If I wanna look back and say, oh my gosh, I got these breath sounds now, how are the breath sounds previously, I need to be able to relate to the terms that were previously used. So if I chart coarse crackles and you chart ronchi, we probably don't have a problem. But if I chart coarse crackles and you chart coarse, well, what does coarse mean? You see, coarse isn't an adventitious breath sound. Remember, the breath sounds, the adventitious breath sounds are these. The term coarse is an adjective to describe a crackle. But coarse is not a listed adventitious breath sound. I have this happen all the time. Students will say, what were your breath sounds? They say they were coarse. Okay, what does that mean? What do you mean they were coarse? You mean like coarse crackles? No, not coarse crackles, just coarse. Okay, okay, I'm confused because when I think about the adventitious breath sounds that might be heard, coarse isn't one of them.
course, is an adjective to describe one of the Adventitious breath sounds. But it's not a breath sound. I don't even know why it's on the charting form. I see it. Believe me, the students even come back at me. They say, yeah, well, Joe, okay, well, why is it an option? I don't know why it's an option. I don't know why people decide to put course as an option on breath sounds when you're choosing it in Epic or whatever electronic healthcare record you're using. I don't know. I know this. It's not a listed adventitious breath sound out of the respiratory therapy Bible called Egan's. So I think we need to really have a serious conversation about this because when I dive deeper into this, I ask my students, okay, if you're not saying a coarse crackle, which is if, if I'm getting a report from an experienced respiratory therapist and they tell me breast sounds are coarse, I typically think in my mind, okay, you're talking about coarse crackles. And that's fine. I can do that. I can play the lingo game. The problem is this. When I dive into it with new respiratory therapists, with students who are learning to be respiratory therapists, when I ask them and they say, oh, my breast sounds are coarse, and I say, so, you're, so, so, so your patient has coarse crackles. Did you have them cough? They say, no, 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 not, not coarse crackles, just coarse. Well, what do you mean by coarse? It just seems like it's louder. Well, what do you mean louder? It just seems like I can hear louder airflow. Let's go listen to the patient. We go listen. Breast sounds are, are clear. I hear nothing adventitious happening. Okay? I said, so what about this makes this patient coarse? You still think they're coarse? Yeah. I still, th still think they're coarse. Why do you think they're coarse? Because it seems louder. Okay. You see what just happened? You have students who are going through the process and are using coarse to define breath sounds that just mean they're louder doesn't mean their course crackles. Now, if we don't correct this, then these people become therapists who in report say course, and then you have people like myself and probably older therapists who hear course and think rock eye or course crackles. And we're talking about two different things. I'm thinking I need to go get this patient to cough or suction them, and they're just saying, no, they're just, they're, they're basically clear, they're just louder. See, you can't let these, you can't let this idea manifest into practitioners at the bedside that after two, three, four, or five years are still using the word coarse to define loud breath sounds without any type of discontinuous sound present. This is true. You can even use coarse to define wheezing. I've heard that before. Coarse wheezing. Coarse wheezing is different than tight wheezes 100 percent but you see the word course is now an adjective to the word wheeze you're giving me more information about the details of the wheeze you heard course crackles different than fine crackles i like it but if five different people all say that the patient's breath sounds are coarse one of them just hears louder breath sounds Another one is thinking coarse crackles, and another one is saying coarse for coarse wheezing. Oh, we got a problem. Because there's no way that the continuity of care can, can continue in a way to where people understand that this is where the patient is, where they have been, and where we're trying to go. Because we're all using the same word with different definitions for it. Which is why my message to all future respiratory therapists right now is to stop defining your breath sounds as coarse alone. If you're going to use the word coarse, you have to use it as an adjective to define an adventitious breath sound, like coarse crackles. Now, coarse crackles, we know, is going to be a breath sound that is indicative of secretions in the larger airways and most likely will clear with a cough or with the aid of suctioning. Now fine crackles on the other side, that's something different. This is more associated with, with fluid out in the periphery. A lot of times you might think about like congestive heart failure or pulmonary edema. But you can also have what we call late inspiratory fine crackles. Again, a bunch of adjectives, late inspiratory fine crackles. 
This is going to be more indicative of atelectasis or maybe some sort of restrictive lung disease such as pulmonary fibrosis. So that's how we use these, these, these adjectives to further define the key adventitious breath sounds. Now remember, some people say coarse and they just say they sound louder. Another respiratory therapist would go in there and hear and say, oh, that patient's clear. But are they loud? Yeah, they're loud, but they're clear. Well, remember, go back to our normals. When you're listening to completely true and normal clear breath sounds, they should be soft and muffled, and you should only hear the first third of expiration. That's a vesicular breath sound. That's a clear breath sound. So if it's very loud and you're listening over the periphery and you hear all of inspiration and all of exhalation, that sounds more like a tracheal breath sound, right? But I'm hearing tracheal breath sounds over the periphery, Joe. Then that is the definition of bronchial. When you hear very loud, clear breath sounds, all of inspiration, all of expiration, over the periphery, that's actually bronchial breath sounds, commonly associated with thickening of the AC membrane, things like pneumonia and ARDS. Nobody ever charts bronchial breath sounds. You know what we chart? We chart clear or we chart diminished. I, it is of my belief that I believe that, that most of the time bronchial breath sounds is the most Mischarted breath sound. I think when people hear bronchial breath sounds and they hear loud air movement, air comes in, air goes out, you hear all of inspiration, all of expiration, I think most people chart clear. And then when they hear soft muffled breath sounds, all of inspiration and only the first third of exhalation, I think they chart diminished. It's just my own personal just reviewing and looking and just learning from students and how people practice and how you interpret things. I think there is a big learning curve for us as respiratory therapists to really dive into and revisit this idea of what are bronchial breath sounds. They're loud, clear breath sounds over the periphery where you hear all of inspiration, all of exhalation, like a tracheal breath sound but over the periphery. We don't chart this enough. You're typically taking care of post-ARDS patients, post-pneumonia patients. You shouldn't be shocked to hear bronchial breath sounds. Now the last two on the list here, we've got Strider. We know that Strider is also a continuous sound. Strider is going to be a continuous sound. It's going to be very representative of a wheeze, except it's going to be audible most of the times without a stethoscope. Not always, but a lot of times you can hear it on the inspiratory phase without a stethoscope. If you want to listen and assess for Strider, you take your stethoscope, put it over the larynx, and listen Upon inspiration, do you hear a continuous sound that resembles much of a wheeze? Some might would say a coarse wheeze, of course. But that's what Strider is. It's indicative of an upper airway obstruction commonly seen post-extubation due to upper airway edema. Pleural friction rub. We'll leave this right here. This is where you are going to hear an isolated area when listening to your patient. You'll hear an isolated area that kind of sounds like a, a creaking or a grating sound during inspiration. Some people use the term like if you're walking on snow and you kind of hear that as you walk on the snow. That's what we would call a pleural friction rub. Now, here in Texas, we're experts on snow because we got five inches last week, and we all know what walking on snow sounds like because we all tried to make a snowman. Of course, it shut the state down for a week. That's another story. My point is, recognize an isolated creaking or grating sound when you hear it as a pleural friction rub, and it would be indicative of some type of pleural inflammation between the pleuras. Okay, so this is my spill 
on breath sounds. My takeaway from this is stop using course as a single breath sound to define breath sounds. Use it as a term, as an adjective to further define one of these adventitious breath sounds. But stop charting at your patient as course. Nobody even knows what that means. We all assume we do, but I don't know what your definition of course is, and you don't know my definition of course. So let's call it course crackles. Let's say course wheezes. Let's say, let's use course as an adjective and stop using it as an adventitious breath sound because it's not. Hope you found this helpful. Send me an email. I'd love to answer your question. If you have um, ever need any type of clarification on anything, especially you future respiratory therapists, send me a message. Put a comment down below. Like and subscribe to this channel. We'd love to have you be a part of the future respiratory therapy community. And in the meantime, go be great.